Well, it's the last lap of the show, and we are aiming to grab a gold medal. Now we have Peter Moreno joining us, uh, of course, a record holder as well. Good to have you with us, Peter. Hi, good morning. Nice to see you again. Yeah, um, you know, before we had this um, conversation, uh, or before getting on live with you, you spoke about you doing barbecue. Um, how is it over there, and uh, compared to when you're in Nigeria here? No, barbecue yesterday was really good. Yeah, it was, it was nice. It's different because it's a different environment, different flavors. Although you can get your own African flavors and put into it, but that was most, most mostly my Jamaican friends yesterday. Mm, that... So yeah, it was it was nice, man. It was nice. The weather was good. All right, I'm sure our, our mouths were getting. Uh, it's, I'm sure it's quite mouth watery, and we want to have some of it. Uh, and after the show, some of us will just go and start eating eba and uh, amala. <laughs> But then, um, let's talk about your training and uh, how you've been holding up during the pandemic. Yeah, um, so uh, we've, yesterday we had a bit of a good news. There's a competition coming up soon in September, okay. I think. However, I'm not going to compete due to, the fact, um, due to the fact that I don't feel like I'm ready and it's been so long. But my coach has now just changed the program for those people that will be competing and those that are not competing will carry on training as per usual for next year. All right. Now, talking about your chance to represent Great Britain, you had that chance, but you decided to choose Nigeria. Why did you make up your mind to run for Nigeria? That, that was going to was always going to be the case. After speaking to Coach, um, we sat down, we looked at both countries, and literally when I scored my when I was when, when, when I was when I was representing Nigeria in 2015. I was going to um, represent England as well for the, for the combined events. Um, so we sat and talk, and we talk about it. I was 100% going to get on the team anyway. But we said, you know, on the long run, where am I going to be more consistent? Co me and Coach Luke was going to be in Nigeria. Not because I wasn't good enough to be in England consistently, but because in the politics in, in the combined event in England was a bit was a bit much because most of the people that I'm going to be competing against, their coaches are the one in charge of picking the teams and stuff. So I just decided to say, you know what, I'm going to go to Motherland and then compete for my motherland, which is what I've done. And I, I, don't, I don't regret it, to be honest with you. Nice. And how has the journey been through the years representing Nigeria? Ups and down, ups and down. Good moments and bad moments, if I can say that. Mm. All right now, what what is your biggest? What has been your biggest challenge um, so far and biggest achievement? My biggest achievement would be 2015 when I when I when I um, like I said when I did my national record in the Pogo, and also it would be 20, 2018 as a bar. No, I mean as a, as a, I should have gotten the medal easily, but. A lot of people don't seem to understand what I have done before coming to Asaba. They don't seem to understand what was in my body and my legs and the amount of stuff I did just before coming and the flights and stuff. Mm. That picture on your background, that was before Asaba. So I did eight events that day. And then I flew to, to Nigeria to come and compete for, for Nigeria. And it's no excuse, but I should have given Nigeria a medal. And I was very disappointed in myself that I didn't do it. But... It is what it is. We just have to, you know, be strong and move on and look forward to the next one. Yeah, and talking about moving on, you're not just an athlete. You're also in the military and a model. How do you get to balance these three careers without any hassle? Ah, it's, it's very easy. I mean, because, like I said yesterday, um, the Army are very proud of me. The Army have given me the chance and the opportunity to carry on and um, to pursue myself and just be the best I can be. They're giving me even a scholarship. It's a talented athletic scholarship scheme, which means that I'm entitled to my own personal coach for gym, my own nutritionist coach, my lifestyle coach, and other other bits and pieces around it. And uh, first first class treatment if I'm injured as well, which is which is really really good. So the army is basically behind me on that. I train twice a day, every day, apart from Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Uh, I do mostly my throws during the day and then my running with my, with my group so that I can have people to run with and stuff. Mm. Other than that, I just eat a lot of the and the goosey soup and stuff like that. And also, you're, you're venturing into modeling. But what was the uh, motivation? 
motivation will be 2015 when I got decamped. And then I had to go to uh, I had to go to Kotonu with my mom to help her out. And then having to end up actually doing a wrong a wrong way. And my mom was like, I was actually all right. I should, I should look into it. And ever since then, she's been nagging me and nagging me. When I was in Dubai last year, I um, did some photo shoots for her. When I was in Nigeria, I did some photo shoots for her. And lately, I did... Lately, I posted something, and uh, Isis Moda contacted me and said that she wanted me to send out my pictures, that the company wanted it. So then I did a lot of photo shoots. My sister helped took the pictures, and then I sent it to her. Now they're out there. Hopefully, somebody will get back to us, and um, we'll see what we'll, we'll see what we'll go from there. Mm. All right. Now, what challenges did you face here in Nigeria, and what do you think is the best measure that we can take in correcting this? My personal challenges in Nigeria would be the way the way we get spoken to as athletes. I, I don't really accept it. I don't buy it. You know. I believe respect is earned, no matter how old you are. I think respect is earned, and everybody deserves respect. Mm -hmm. So that's me, number one, the way we get spoken to by the officials, by the coaches, and by the, uh, the people that are in charge of us, because they have little power, they think they're Jesus Christ. Mm. For me, it's, it's not acceptable, it's not on. Um, we at least need to start coming up. I'm not saying everyone should go and start being rude to, to coaches and officials and stuff, but just appreciate appreciate the fact that you are a lot more than they see you as you can do better than what they think you can do. Just remember, without us, there's no AFN. Mm. That's one thing I want to really, really get across to us at least. Without us, there is no AFN, there is no Nigerian Athletics. Because and at the same time without them there's no us, but we are right now more important than them. That's the way I see it. Um, stand up for your rights. Don't back down to nobody, but don't be rude. Um, and just and just train hard. Train hard and do the right thing. Don't take drugs. Because if you take drugs, obviously, you know, you're not going to be where you're supposed to be. Yeah, very true. But yeah, I mean, I've, I've had a lot of coaches, I've, a lot of officials that have been rude to me and abused me and uh, cost me and stuff like that. But I'm the kind of person that I will tell you straightforward there and there how it is, how I feel. And if you don't like it, don't like it. But I will not come across and abuse you unless you abuse me. That's, that's, that's just me. Mm, not true. Um, would you say this is one of the reasons why lots of young athletes have been poached by other countries and uh, also one of the reasons why some of these athletes have retired early? I would say it's a major big part of it. But at the same time, don't forget, like Olu Fasuba talked earlier on, we are not getting pushed by our own nation. When they're not selling us out there. They're not promoting us as much as we're supposed to. They're not proud. I would say the word, they're not proud of us. They're only proud of individuals. Uh, I don't want to have to name individuals, but they're only proud of individuals, athletes. It's not about that. It's not about those individuals. It's about everybody together. You have to push us up. You have to showcase us. You have to, you have to show us. You have to be proud of us. You know, we have young ones coming. We don't want to be, we don't want to be, um, like for me right now, my event, the Catalan, it's not going to go nowhere in Nigeria because they're not pushing us that way, that forward. So imagine that there's maybe a kid of 15, 16 years old that wants to be a decathlete. But if I'm not getting shown, or Sadler's not getting shown, how is he going to feel? Is he going to say, would he, would he come and do the decathlon? No, he will choose a different event, like a sprint or jump. So they need to sort of us more, and I think that is the reason, that is the reason why some athletes are running to different countries. That is why some, um, some coaches from different countries are coming in to take us out. And I don't blame any Nigerian athletes right now, as it stands. I don't blame anyone for leaving Nigeria. I think they're doing, they're doing the right thing. They are pushing their career, and they want to have a better chance in getting to the level they, to the level they know they can be at. Yeah. So Nigeria needs to step up their game and bring back our athletes, because we've lost a lot. True. Now, as we go, I'll give you a few seconds to talk about the cat loan, because it seems to be an unusual aspect of athletics in Nigeria. Do you think there's a future for the cat loan? There can be a future. Mm. But is there a future? That is the question. But there can be a future, because before, before 2018, that was, that was only, only me doing 7,000. Now there's two of us, maybe three. If there's more competition, I can promise you Nigeria will provide 7,000 plus athletes. Wow. They can because we have the talent, but we don't have we don't have 
the right coaches for the right events. We don't have the right training facilities. The tracks are, the, some of the tracks are unbearable. If you look at National Stadium in Abuja, in, in Lagos, you can't run on that. You, you will break your legs into pieces. You, you, you will be officially crippled because it's just, you're running on, on road, not even tapping, you're running on road. So that, that will be a feature, but we just need to make sure our leaders push it and start stepping up their games and giving us what they promise. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. And it was indeed a wonderful conversation. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me once again.